So here we're calculating the pH of another uh, dilute acid solution, and they give us the Ka of propionic acid. It's 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5, again, very small. Uh, and they want us to calculate the pH of a 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 molar aqueous solution of propionic acid. Round our answer to two decimal places. So to begin, we have to first start with the balance uh, reaction equation for the dissociation of this weak acid. Now, weak acid, again, is propionic acid, C2H5CO2H. This H right here represents the ionizable proton or the hydrogen that will be lost when this uh, weak acid dissociates. Okay, so we've got propionic acid and it's going to react with water molecules. Okay, propionic acid is again our uh, acid here is a weak acid. Water is acting as the base. Well, it's going to be at equilibrium and what we're going to end up with is this acid, according to the Bronsted definition, is going to donate a proton to this water molecule. So we're going to end up, one of our products is going to be hydronium. Again, this could also be written as H+. Plus, okay, And the conjugate base of this acid uh, would be this. Once we have the reaction equation written, we ensure that it's balanced and we have our first step completed. Our next step is to develop our ice table. Well, here's our ice table and we are going to be looking at the initial concentrations of our major species, the change in concentrations, and our end goal is to determine the equilibrium concentrations of each of these substances. Now, if you remember, we are going to eliminate water. Water is the solvent, and in this instance, water is not going to affect the pH of this solution to a significant degree. So what is the initial concentration of propionic acid? Well, that is given. It's 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. And the initial concentration of hydronium is 0, and the conjugate base is 0. Now, we know that the concentrations of these substances is going to change as this reaction reaches equilibrium. Well, I know the direction in which it's going to change. For my reactant, propionic acid, the concentration is going to decrease, and it's going to decrease by x because the stoichiometric coefficient there is 1. Okay, If this stoichiometric coefficient were 2, then this would be 2x but it is just one, so it is just x. Uh, I also know that the concentrations for these two substances is going to increase. So the change is going to be in the positive direction. It's going to increase by what? Well, by x as well. So to determine how I find the equilibrium concentrations, well, I'm just going to add straight down these functions, just like I would be uh, in a regular addition uh, math problem. So 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 plus minus x is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 minus x. Here, this becomes plus x and this becomes plus x. So now that I have my ice table constructed, my next step is to write the equilibrium expression for the dissociation of propionic acid. And that is equal to if we go back to our balance reaction equation, it is the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of the conjugate base. So that would be H, and I'm just going to write it as H plus times the concentration of over the concentration of propionic acid. And then I substitute the given Ka and the equilibrium concentrations from the ice table into these positions. So the given Ka is 
1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to, well, in our ice table, what is the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium? And this is the equilibrium constant expression. So at equilibrium, the concentration of hydronium is this, is x. So this is going to be x times x because the concentration of the conjugate base is also x at equilibrium. Well, at equilibrium, the concentration of propionic acid is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 minus x. So I'm going to plug that in here. 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 minus x. Now we're going to continue on like we have the other problems, and we're going to use the approximation method and check it to see if it is valid. So using the approximation method, this would become 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to x squared over 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Solving for x, we get x squared is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 times 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. Here I get 3 times 10 to the minus 9 is equal to x squared. And taking the square root of both sides, I have that x is equal to 5.59 times 10 to the minus... Now, we, before we move on, let's check this approximation and make sure that it is valid. So we got this for x. So to check the approximation to see if it's valid, we simply take x and we divide it by the initial concentration. Well, x is 5.59 times 10 to the minus 5. And the initial concentration was, if you look here, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. We multiply this by 100% to convert it to a percentage, and we end up with 23.3%. Well, just looking at this, I see that this is too high. That means that the change in concentration is 23.3% of the initial concentration. So this is outside our confidence interval for what we know about Ka's. And so we cannot use the approximation method in this case. What this means is we have to do this the long way. So what we did here will not work because the assumption is not valid here. 23% is much greater then our cutoff threshold of 5%. So what we need to do now is begin here again, and instead of dropping x using the approximation method, we have to solve for x using the quadratic formula. So let's con continue on, and we will end up with 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 times 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4 minus x. And here, that will be equal to x squared. So now we're going to distribute this to everything in parentheses, and we end up with 3 times 10 to the negative 9 minus 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5th x is equal to x squared. And we're going to bring x squared over to the other side negative x squared minus 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth x plus 3 times 10 to the negative 9 is equal to 0. So what we have here is a quadratic expression. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And so using the quadratic formula, we can solve for x. So if I take our quadratic expression, which is here, 
I can solve for x by plugging into the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Well, this is our a, this is our b, and this is our c. So to plug this in, x is going to be equal to negative b, so it's going to be minus 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5, squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 3, times 10 to the minus 9, all over 2 times a, which is 1. This simplifies to x is equal to negative 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5, plus or minus the square root of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8 over 2. So I get two possible values for x because I add here or subtract here, which will give me two possible values. So doing the addition first, x will be equal to negative 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 plus the square root of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 8 all divided by 2. That gives me a value of 4.83 times 10 to the minus 5. And if I'm going to do the other calculation, x would be equal to negative 6.13 times 10 to the negative 5. Now the thing is, when you have to use the quadratic formula to solve for x, one of your answers, one of your values for x will always be impossible. And in this case, the impossible one is very easy to identify. It's going to be this one. This one is the one that is impossible because the equilibrium concentrations of our products cannot be negative. And so that leaves this value for x as our correct value. So now let's finish up by determining our equilibrium concentrations. Now, we are able to determine the equilibrium concentrations for every single one of these major species in our equilibrium uh, ice table, but we are only interested in the equilibrium concentration of this. Why? Because they ask us to calculate the pH, and pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. So we just need H plus, and we can find pH. So if we go back to our work, we determine that X is equal to 4.3 times 10 to the minus 5. And our hydronium ion concentration is equal to X according to our ice table. So that is equal to 4.83 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. So that means the pH is equal to the negative log of this, our hydro hydronium ion concentration, 4.83 times 10 to the negative 5, which gives us a pH of 4.32. Now, if the answer that you get is a little bit off of what Alex has, it is because you rounded or your calculator rounded uh, your intermediate values uh, rounded it a little bit too much. So if there's a discrepancy, I would imagine that it would be uh, a result of uh, this value here because it's only rounded to one digit, three. There, I'm fairly certain, are more digits that come after that three, but my calculator did not take it out that far for me.